Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Hink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well and having a lovely Sunday. I am having a lovely Sunday. My family is in town, so that is super exciting. My brother and sister-in-law and my niece and nephew are here for the weekend and we are having a fantastic time. And so I am here to share with you part two of my huge June book haul. Um, as you know, part one was released last Sunday. I will link it down below so that you can take a look. And I am super excited to bring this next list of books to you. Now, as always, I say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, because you're gonna wanna get these books. Now, you're gonna wanna get them from your independent bookstore, have your library order them. A lot of these are actually on a backlist, so you can get them a myriad of different places. So let's get started, because I have a lot of books to tell you about, and you know how I can talk. The first book is, was recommended to me by my friends, Ryan Lundman and Jana. And Ryan writes The Charming Rant, which I have talked about before. And he is a mm, amazing, amazing writer. And when he says, Russell, read a book, I usually pick it up. And that's where we got The City in the City by China Melville. Now, I am a huge fan of China Melville in that I have liked everything that I've read. And can you guys, I just have to tell you, all I can see in this video right now is my gray hair. My gray hair in my chin is driving me crazy. But let's talk about this city on the city by China Melville. China Melville does this thing where he um, creates sort of these conceits that are simple enough to understand, but complex in their nature. In this book, there are two cities, two very different cities, but they are actually built upon each other. So if you are from one city, you don't go into a building that belongs to the other city. You can only stay in the buildings that are part of your city. And what happens in this novel is that a murder occurs and we have a detective that has to investigate that murder and in doing so finds himself traveling between the two cities. I think that sounds fantastic and I think Ryan said that this book was really really good and I am super excited to read The City and the City by China Melville and I think that cover is just gorgeous. Okay. The next book I'm going to tell you about is The Institutionists by Colson Whitehead. Now, most of us know Colson Whitehead for The Underground Railroad, deservedly so, a phenomenal book. But I have actually heard that his books prior to that are even better. And my friend Ann Kingman called this one of her favorite books. And when she says it's a favorite book, you guys, you listen to Ann Kingman. I'm just telling you. Um, this is the story of... I'm going to read the back. Actually, I was trying to figure out how I was going to summarize this one, and it's too much. So, there are two warring factions in the Department of the Elevator Inspectors in a bustling metropolis vying for dominance. The empiricists who go by the book and rigorously check every structural and mechanical detail, and the intuitionists whose observational methods involve meditation and instinct. Layla May Watson is the first black female inspector and in a devout institutionist and with the highest accuracy rate in the department and is the center of our turmoil. An elevator and a new municipal building has crashed on Layla May's watch, fanning the flames of the empiricist versus intuitionist's feud and compelling Layla May to go underground to investigate. As she endeavors to clear her name, she becomes entangled in a web of intrigue that leads her to a secret that will change her life forever. And I hear this is a big metaphor on race and America. And um, yeah, I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about the in Intuitionists by Colson Whitehead. I have a hard time with that word, Mr. Whitehead. Um, so the intuition Intuitionist. <laughs> ah, I'm not going to even try anymore. But there you go. Read the book. Okay. Now, the next book probably doesn't need that much talking about, and that's Hum If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Marius, because when I brought this up on my Instagram, everyone I know said they've read it and they loved it. Bianca was brought to my attention because she stood, stepped in at the last Booktopia to replace an author who couldn't make it due to illness, and everyone I know who went said that she was freaking fantastic. Um, Bianca is from um, South Africa, but currently lives in Canada, I believe. And this is the story of a nine-year-old girl, a white girl living in Johannesburg in the 1970s, and how her life mixes with beauty, 
um, Mabali, and I'm probably saying that wrong, who is a woman from a rural village. And there's an uprising called the Soweto Uprising that was a black student uprising, which causes our uh, Robin, the little white girl, to lose her parents and Beauty's daughter to go missing. And what winds up happening is Beauty is hired to take care of and watch Robin. And now their lives become intertwined. From what I hear, this book is a tribute to the nanny that Bianca had when she was growing up, who she has much love and dedication for. Um, I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about hum if you don't know the words by Bianca Marius. And I need to get to it. Need to get to it. Um, the next book I can't tell you why I actually bought other than it was so intriguing to me for a couple reasons. And that is A Guide for Murdered Children by Silver Sparrow. First thing I notice is that Silver Sparrow must be um, a pen name because all it says is that she lives in LA. Okay, first, intriguing. Two, the plot. What happens if the spirits of murdered children can come back and inhabit adults to take revenge on the people that killed them? Two, that sounds phenomenal. Three, the packaging is flippin' brilliant. You have a book about murdered children coming back to, for revenge, packaged this pink stars unicorn. It, to me, everything about this, I hope is a, it's as brilliant as all those pieces in my mind make it to be. And so that's A Guide for Murdered Children by Sarah Sparrow. And if has anyone read this, I'd be very interested to know what you guys think of it. I may save that one for October because it has sort of that creepy October feel to it, doesn't it? I think it does. The next book um, I bought because two things. Celeste Ng blurbed it. And I want to say um, Aro Kwan, Reese Kwan, whose book the um, is coming out next month. I'll be talking about it very, very soon. Um, was talking about it when it came out. And that is The Ensemble by Aja Gabal. And this is the story of four friends. I'm going to say friends and put it in quotation. They are four people who um, are a quartet and their intertwined lives together and their ups, their downs, their fighting, their loving, their relationships, their marriage, their children, all of that stuff as it goes along. One, the cover is freaking beautiful. Two, it sounds fascinating. I don't read enough books about the world of classical music. And um, I am super excited about the ensemble by Aja Gabal. Yeah, definitely excited about that. The next book that I picked up I picked up because I had just read the um, author's novel, and that is Shaba Rowe. Now, I read Girls Burn Brighter and loved that book. And so everyone, when I said I had read that, said that her story, her short story collection, which is The Unrestored Woman, was just as brilliant. Now, this covers all sorts of topics. Um, according to the back, it examines one of the biggest refugee crises in history. It's a startling glimpse into the psyche of people pushed to the edge. Um, it um, has to deal with India and Pakistan and change and yeah, no, everything about that sounds so good. And her novel was fantastic. So when I saw this, I bought this at the Strand Bookstore in New York City, and um, I had to pick it up. So that's The Unrestored Woman by Shaba Rowe, and I'm super excited for that one. The next book I bought, also at the Strand, as you'll see by the sticker on the front, is Self-Portrait with Boy by Rachel Lyon. Now, the reason this book was brought to my attention is because, as I said in my last video, I was having breakfast with Jossie Chaffee, and she brought me that very lovely book by her husband, and I asked her what she had read lately that really had an impact on her, and she mentioned Self-Portrait with Boy. And um, I'm just going to sort of sell it to you the way she sold it to me. I think it has more than this, but this is about an artist that takes photographs. And one day she takes a photograph of herself. It's a self-portrait, but in the background is the her neighbor's young boy falling from a window and being becoming injured. I'm not sure if he dies or if he's just severely injured. However, it has power as art. And then it's that decision-making process. There's a lot of pieces now to the puzzle of this art with the children, the child in the background, how it will affect your neighbors, and also herself and this art that she's created that has merit. Um, I've Jesse just said that this book was 
phenomenal. And so I had to pick it up. So Self-Portrait with Boy by Rachel Lyon. And that is a pretty great cover. Pretty great. And I got a signed edition at The Strand. Um, the next bookstore that I went to was McNally Jackson, was also in New York City. And I, um, I got two books from them, but one you've already heard about because I bought So Lucky by Nicola Griffith there, um, but I've already read it. The next book I got is Broken Verses by Camilla Shamsi. I loved, loved, loved Home Fire and didn't realize that I had been missing out on a writer that I needed to get more books from. So I brought Broken Verses. I don't think this is the one. She was also shortlisted for the booker previously, um, and I'm not sure that this is the book, but um, I am going to start collecting all of her novels, so it doesn't matter. I just needed this one. This is, um, in 1986, a Pakistani's greatest poet was found brutally murdered, um, beaten to death by government thugs. And then, two years later, his lover disappears, and the young girl, who is their daughter, just assumes that her mother has abandoned her. And what happens is she winds up getting a job at Pakistan's first independent TV station, and she starts getting these letters written in this code. And all of a sudden, she wonders if her mother is still alive. And um, there's a lot of darkness to it. So it's like, sort of, do you want to investigate this? Um, and it has a political angle, and um, it sounds phenomenal. And if it's anything like Home Fire, it's going to be brilliant. And that is Broken Verses by Camilla Shamsi. Okay, next but not, well, next and second to last is Mad Boy by Nick Arvin. This was actually sent to me by Europa Edition, so thank you, Europa. And the subtitle is An Account of Henry Phipps in the War of 1812. So this is actually set on the backdrop of the War of 1812. And um, Henry has set out to realize his dead mother's last dying wish, which is to be buried at sea. And there's a lot of family drama going on in young Henry's life, but one of the things that's certainly going on is the War of 1812. So I think this book has all of that, of a boy trying to fulfill his mom's last wish with the backdrop of war, with the backdrop of a family that is, has trouble. Um, and have you ever read an Europa book that you haven't liked? Because I haven't. And I'm super excited to read Nick Arvin's Mad Boy, an account of Henry F Pips, Phipps, um, in the War of 1812. So I'm super excited about that. God, that cover is gorgeous. Last but not least is a book that um, I have to give a shout out to the booksmith in San Francisco because I really wanted to go to this author's author event and I couldn't make it. So I called them and asked if I could purchase a copy and if they could have it personally signed for me. And they did. And thank you, booksmith. And this is A Lucky Man by Jamel Brinkley. Now, I have a hard time explaining this book. I have a hard time talking about any short story collection, but I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about this. So I'm just going to read for you the beginning of it and the way they summarize it. In nine powerful stories set in Brooklyn and the South Bronx, a lucky man announces the arrival of a significant new voice in fiction. An imaginative young boy from a Bronx goes swimming with his day camp group at a backyard pool in the suburbs and faces the effects of power and privilege in ways he can barely grasp. A teen intent on proving himself a man and an all-night revel is preoccupied by watching out for his impressionable younger brother. A pair of college boys on the prowl follow two girls home from a party and have to own their uncomfortable truths of their desires. And... At a Capria conference, two boys grapple with how to tell the story of their family, caught in the dance of their painful, fractured history. Everyone I know, including John over at Green Apple Books, has told me that this collection is freaking brilliant. And I follow uh, Mr. Brinkley on Twitter, and I think he is freaking brilliant. So I'm super excited to get to this book. That is A Lucky Man by Jamal Brinkley. So, and I said Jamal, it's probably Jamel. I'm sorry, Jamel. Sorry about that. Um, so there you go. There is part two of my amazing, amazing book haul for the last month and a half or so. I hope as many books as possible wind up on your TBR. Have you guys read any of these? Are any of them sp need to make it up to the top of my TBR as fast as possible? As always, I wish you a very, very happy happy reading. And if you're a return subscriber, thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, I hope you like what you saw. Please subscribe. And until next time, talk to you later. Bye!